So, good morning everybody, thank you for coming to this talk. I'll rattle through them slightly quicker now, I hope. Um, so, we are Catalyst IT, and we have spent 25 years building a global open source based business, um, currently employing north of 200 staff, um, purely focused on the benefits or delivery of uh, platforms built on open source technologies. And a very big part of what we do at Catalyst, particularly in the organization that I lead, which is based in the UK and Ireland, and in this time zone slice, uh, is work with Moodle. Um, and most of you have probably heard of us, maybe using some of the plugins that we've released, or have probably seen us, because we, we benefit from a very bright brand that you will see around the place. Um, we also have decided to take care of your 80s needs for the party tomorrow, so if you can, come along and get yourself some 80s kits. Um, so, one of the key areas of focus for us is to provide Moodle services or Moodle products or Moodle, Moodle um, managed services for the higher ed sector. And there's a really good reason for that. It's quite clear to see. Uh, this slide is now two years old, but it's still widely used, significantly the majority uh, platform in use in the higher education sector around the world. Actually, Martin had some updated slides for this yesterday, which I need to get my hands on, but the numbers were still strong. So, you can see here that represented in orange, Moodle across most of the world, the US aside, still is a significant leader in the platform utilized in the education space. And of course it comes with complexities. This is just a quick example of some of the probably known or maybe um, uh, uh, recognizable higher education institutions that we currently support um, in, in our Moodle managed service. Now, during that time, uh, sorry, and this slide here just represents some of the tooling or additional open source technologies that we utilize to provide what I'm about to show you in the next 10 or 15 slides. Um, so the key thing to note first and foremost is that for many people, there's a, there's a horrible term that we really dislike, which is that open source is free. Um, sure, uh, you can go and download Moodle now, we can all go download Moodle, we can turn it on, we can run it, and then uh, very little beyond that. Um, it's free like a puppy, we use this term a lot, you have to feed and water it, and the watering or feeding of your open source technology is the, the piece that Catalyst have spent many years developing, and we refer to this as our service wrapper or our managed service wrapper. Um, and I want to talk through today some of the key pieces that we've developed over the past 25 years around um, ensuring that your Moodle application, your Moodle platform is well watered, well maintained and capable. Um, and in particular today, I want to focus on these key pieces here. So we're talking about very large scale, very high performance or high performance requirement platforms. Um, and at those scales and at those load levels, uh, Moodle requires additional consideration, just like any application. So I want to walk through today some of these key points. First and foremost today, particularly in your Moodle application, it holds a lot of data, and that data must be duly taken care of. Um, we are all significantly um, or commonly giving away data of our, of our own, of our own uh, personal nature, which we trust the receivers of that data to take care of. But in the university sector in particular, we're talking about huge amounts of data that are passed over as a mandatory requirement to complete your university program. So it's important that when that data is handed over, it's taken care of. With a system like Moodle, um, anybody essentially can write code or enhance the product. And that is both wonderfully beneficial and somewhat high risk. You are assuming that the Moodle core product, which is very well secure um, and very well written, but also all of the flam uh, fleet of plugins that you might add to that uh, Moodle platform are well written and secure. Um, that's a big assumption, and you can't just carry that assumption forward. You must verify it. So a really key part of what we ensure to do, or that we think you have to do if you're going to run a large-scale Moodle platform, is ensure that there is a good level of security vetting and security consideration. There's a number of standard industry practices for this, but humans, developers, will make mistakes. And so it's really key to ensure that you carry out due diligence, peer review, code review, and so on. The other thing to note is that in a high performance Moodle, Moodle Core, out of the box, runs really well. But once you layer lots of plugins into it that maybe weren't designed with the, with the high performance, high load use case, it actually can significantly change the performance of the platform. 
you must take that into consideration. We don't run any Moodles with no plugins. All of our Moodles have plugins in them. But it's really important that you verify that that plugin is not going to cause you a spectacular disaster. Funny enough, for us in the UK, today, on the first day of term, when all of the universities go back. Um, that's a good example. We believe there's a couple of basic pillars of security. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, but it's important to look at the three key risk areas that you have, which is the software code itself, uh, the infrastructure on which that software is running on, and then the people and processes around maintaining and managing that system as a whole. And within those areas, we carry out some, and this is not an exhaustive list as I know, key elements in every single case. So all code is peer reviewed. All code should be peer reviewed. There should be no path on which somebody can write code and deploy that to your production system. That would be crazy. Don't do that. Um, infrastructure. Uh, we're now working with cloud infrastructure provision, as you probably can um, uh, understand. And it's not OK for you to just have sort of unprotected direct access to that infrastructure or to use keys and tokens. Um, and that's the people and the systems themselves. And so we're pushing towards um, much more standardized infrastructure security. And of course, on the people side, MFA now should be everywhere, along with a number of other uh, sort of standard practices to ensure that your systems are kept secure. And ultimately, the data within your systems is kept secure. We use AWS. I'm not going to describe this um, slide here, but the AWS shared security model is something you should be aware of if you're using AWS. It really clearly lay lays out what AWS commits to take care of and what you, as the AWS operators or adopters, need to take care of. We talked a little bit about customization. Customization is a fantastic benefit of using an open source technology or a technology such as Moodle, but it comes with huge responsibility. If you're wondering who made the quote at the bottom, it's Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, obviously. He's um, very color aligned with us. Um, and so, yes, we can write lots of custom functionality onto Moodle that enhances the overall delivery of the product. But in doing so, we need to make sure that we're carrying out due diligence and due consideration about performance and about future sustainability. So, okay, you've read a lot of customization. We find a lot of Moodles in this case. You've hacked away at the core code base. That looks great now. But when you come to upgrade next year, or when you come to deploy new functionality or features into your Moodle, it's actually um, a huge burden, a huge burden. And unfortunately, we find a lot of Moodles in a sorry state because there wasn't due consideration taken care of in the customization space. So don't do some of those things. We run this basic test across a lot of the ideas or um, innovations that are being considered. So we call it the 5S test. Is it simplified and standardized? Are you building something that's so to sort of unique to one use case that it actually doesn't have a wider appeal or a wider use case down the line? Can your requirements be broadened? Could you make it broad enough to be open sourced and shared back so as other people may actually engage and involve themselves in your new feature or functionality? Is it scalable? Okay, it works with 100 users on the platform. Will it work with 10,000 users on the platform? Will it work across multiple platforms? Um, is it secure? Probably should be at the top of that list. Uh, and then is it sustainable? Are we going to be able to upgrade and maintain this functionality into the future? <clears throat> the other piece is that you can't have your system go down when you're operating a university in the modern day and age and nobody do anything about it until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, so actually having a full 24-7 coverage, which enables you to also um, lean on uh, a team of individuals who are awake at their desk, ready to carry out whatever incident response actions might be required, is hugely um, important for high performance, high load, mission critical platforms, um, which is what we're talking about. And then finally, we talk about high performance. Um, we are using uh, techno technologies which are cloud native by design, so you need to be utilizing or reaping the benefits of uh, the tooling and resources that are given to us in the modern cloud systems. So just jumping, and I'm going to skip this slide, but ultimately the architecture that you might expect to see on a large platform nowadays no longer just looks like a server or a couple of servers with a load balancer, but actually a highly um, cloud native design. And finally, we tried to use analytics to inform 
um, behaviour and preparation. And so if we see high stakes exams on the horizon, which must not fail, a high stakes exam cannot fail, then we make sure that we scale and prepare accordingly at the system and infrastructure level. And actually if we can use um, Moodle tooling, Moodle uh, technology to inform us of when a high stakes exam is on the horizon, then we can actually prepare um, accordingly and not be reactive to those kinds of events, which, were, which can cause you significant pain in the event that your platform receives a surge of traffic that you were not prepared for or did not have um, prior warning of. And so the high stakes examination is a good example of what I wanted to just talk about. Um, examination in Moodle or in any um, method is, is a really high stress period for anybody who works in, in, in this sector. If your students receive any performance issue, performance blip or performance failure or if the system does not hold up then ultimately you've got a number of very, very upset, and rightly so, students, and the, your credibility and reputation can be significantly impacted. Exams are stressful for everybody. They cannot fail. Just to give you an example of what is capable in Moodle, if well architected, one of our partners, um, this partner being the National Open University of Nigeria, very large Moodle, 150 daily active students. They're actually in exam mode uh, right now. Um, lots of, lots of uh, courses and programs, a good example is that we frequently see 10,000 concurrent examinations taking place using the Moodle quiz, which can be a relatively heavy module in Moodle. Um, and the Moodle assignment submission is used frequently to, to gather uh, tens of thousands of assignment submissions. This scales up and down accordingly um, and as required, talking about some of the things we touched on previously. So that's it from me. Um, just a little bit here about some of the acceptance or, or um, uh, feedback from some of those who uh, use at National Open University, but I'm out of my 15 minutes. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and if you want to talk about any of that, of course, we're over at the stand in bright red.